Every country in the world is scared of North Korea, but North Korea is scared of only one thing. And that one thing was made clear in December of 2023, when a video emerged on the internet showing something you don't see every day. It showed Kim Jong-un, the leader of North Korea, crying on national TV. Now, keep in mind this is the same guy who terrifies the rest of the world because he commands an army with nuclear weapons and who, like his father and grandfather, is widely regarded as an authoritarian ruler of one of the most oppressive governments in the world. And so to the big question, why was Kim Jong-un crying? The answer is simple. Kim Jong-un was begging North Korean women to have more babies, which probably tells you all you need to know about the threat of population collapse in North Korea. But beyond the evidence of Kim Jong-un's tears, how about a look at the actual demographic data in the country? The headline is that North Korea is facing a declining population due to persistently low birth rates. Today, the birth rate in North Korea, which is the number of children each woman will give birth to on average, stands at only 1.79 births per woman, which is a problem because it is lower than the average birth rate that is statistically required for population replacement. Demographic research suggests that the ideal birth rate for every country in the world to replace its population and avoid a decline or a collapse in the future is 2.1 births per woman. But the problem for North Korea is that the average birth rate in the country has been below the ideal replacement fertility rate since way back in 1997 and has pretty much declined every year since. Now, there's a quick question to answer here. What does this mean in the long term for North Korea? The bottom line is that research estimates suggest that if the current trends continue, then North Korea's population could start declining from around 2034. And if nothing changes, well, then that decline would simply continue nonstop. Now, this might sound somewhat familiar, especially seeing the population decline trends in other Asian countries. China saw its population decline for the first time in decades in 2022 and could now see its population decline by as much as 100 million people over the next 25 years, with its birth rate currently at only 1.09 births per woman. In Japan, the country's birth rate has dropped for seven consecutive years and now stands at 1.26 births per woman, which is the lowest on record for the country. And then there's South Korea, the poster child for population collapse. South Korea has the lowest birth rate in the world, at 0.72 births per woman, which is so bad that if nothing changes, then half of South Korea's current population of 51 million people will have disappeared by 2100. Now, with this backdrop of what's happening in other Asian countries, it's somewhat easy to think that what's happening in North Korea is entirely similar, but that isn't exactly accurate. In fact, North Korea is a bit of a paradox because the thing that China, South Korea, and Japan have in common is that they are upper middle income and high income countries and there's a clear correlation with population decline happening in developed countries around the world. On the other hand, low income countries typically don't face this problem and instead, they typically have higher fertility rates. For example, the average fertility rate across Sub-Saharan Africa is about 4.4 births per woman. Now, in 2022, North Korea's gross national income per capita was just over $1,000, which makes it one of the world's poorest countries. And yet, unlike other poor countries, it is facing a population decline with a birth rate that's more comparable to upper middle income and high income countries. Which brings us to another key question. What exactly is driving North Korea's population decline? And to answer that, we need to go back in time, all the way back to the 1950s. After the Korea War ended in 1953, North Korea experienced a massive explosion in the growth of its population. Now, a sharp rise in population growth after a war is actually a pretty common phenomenon. Because after years of young and middle-aged men being at war and dying at war, then it makes sense that those who survive and make it back home spend the next few years of their lives starting new families and making lots of babies. And there's a lot of data to prove this. In the US, for example, in the years after the Second World War, from 1946 to 1964, nearly 76 million babies were born, increasing the population as of 1945, the last year of the Second World War, by more than 50%. In North Korea, in the years after the Korean War, 
The population grew from 11.7 million citizens in 1960 to 15 million by 1970, with a total fertility rate at nearly 4 births per woman. But as it turns out, that was too much population growth for the country. And as the country's economy slowed in the late 1970s, the North Korean government began to encourage only one or two children per couple. And to drive this policy home, the government made contraceptives and abortion widely available to its citizens. But within 20 years of making these population control policies, North Korea's population fell from 2.84 births per woman as of 1980 to 1.94 births per woman as of 2000. Now, aside from the government's population control policies, another huge driver of modern day population decline in North Korea is a defining event in the mid 1990s. Between 1994 and 1998, North Korea experienced one of the worst food shortages in human history, with mass starvation throughout those years, resulting in up to 10% of the population dying. Now, naturally, people are less likely to have kids during a period of mass starvation and deaths. And so this period was critical because North Korea's birth rate dropped below the ideal replacement fertility rate for the first time during this famine. But beyond the reality of the food shortages, there's an argument that the trauma it caused may have resulted in today's generation of young North Koreans who either experienced the famine or were born shortly afterwards being less likely to have a lot of children because of fears of experiencing similar hardships. But while this is a somewhat intangible idea that cannot exactly be measured, there's a more tangible consequence of the farming in the mid-90s. More women in North Korea sought jobs and income to provide for their families, which has ultimately had an impact on birth rates significantly. Now, with North Korea already being a low-income country, the consequences of population decline are much higher compared to its richer neighbors who can invest in technology to reshape their economies. Having been closed off from the world as an isolated and heavily militarized state for the last 50 years, North Korea's key resource is its people who keep labor-intensive industries like mining and agriculture alive in the country. But to avoid a scary reality where population decline actively hampers its economy, North Korea's government is now urging women to have more babies, with policy moves such as public statements from Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of the country, and also introducing incentives for those who have larger families. For example, families with three or more children get preferential housing, free food and medicine, and also educational perks for their kids. But unfortunately for North Korea, unlike other countries, it cannot leverage immigration as a tool to slow down its population decline. While countries like Japan, which has historically been anti-immigration, is actually starting to open up its borders, it is almost impossible to imagine North Korea doing the same, after establishing itself as one of the most isolated countries in the world, with almost no immigration. And so North Korea is left with nothing except its most powerful symbol, Kim Jong-un himself, pushing the message, asking for a major demographic shift in the country, and hoping that the citizens listen to him. Because if they don't, then the prospect of a shrinking population for North Korea comes with the horrific possibility of one of the world's poorest countries becoming even poorer. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, then please give the video a thumbs up as that really helps the channel. And don't forget to subscribe as well. And before you go, make sure you check out this playlist of all the cool geography videos I've made on the channel. See you in the next one.